In the pocket, see that safety cut the crosser, and I love the arc on that throw by Kyler. And suing Dolphins possession, Tua says anything you can do, I can do better. Just a beautiful throw. When that receiver goes inside that DB, it's tough. It's got to be Ooh. firm enough, but also enough air to let that receiver go run to it. Great throw by Tua. That is Preston Williams, who would later in the drive on third and seven from the 10, take it in for the score. Tua sees that defender carry that inside seam. Williams there by himself. Nice job of getting it to him quick so he can go score. Dolphins up 24-17 at the half. First possession for the Cardinals in the second half. How about this, coach? How about this catch? This is outstanding. I, I, I have no idea how he caught who that. The, who is this kid? Daniels? That's his first catch, and he goes out and just rips it from the DB. Darrell Daniels is his name. Somehow comes down with it. They take another look. Byron Jones seemed to have it. Play confirmed after a review. Now, it's Murray. Oh, my goodness. This is part of their offense, that quarterback red zone run. They stole this from Baltimore. Kyler's so special out in the open field. Kyler up there, 31-24. 12 minutes to play. Dolphins at the 28. Get Whoa. loose. What a play. This is sudden. This reminds me of Russell Wilson. This is what he looked like at Alabama. The sudden instincts get down to him. Get down. Get down. Get down. Yeah. What a run. Yes, what Russell does much better than that is slide. But it was a spectacular play, and it sets up this great throw. Uh, nice one-on-one -on -one ball. Give your receiver a chance to go high point. Randy Moss, someone. Great catch by Matt Collins. Now, Cardinals down 34-31. It's Murray. It's Christian Kirk. This is 35 yards. And that's going to set up a potential game-tying field goal. On fourth and one, they bring out Zane Gonzalez. This is a 49-yard field goal attempt, which is within the range you'd think of every NFL kicker. It's a three-wood. It's a three-wood, three but it's short. Yeah, your caddy, you, your, your caddy misclubbed you. Yeah. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. A 49-yard field goal attempt come up short. Crazy. And just like that, it's over. And it's Tua over Kyler in a spectacular battle that, you know, chalked me up for that being a Super Bowl matchup oh, yeah. between two quarterbacks one day. And, Dan, I just want to start with you because I've said many times, I will admit, I was dead wrong about Kyler Murray. I said coming in I thought he was too small but before last year. And obviously I couldn't be more wrong. He's spectacular. I know you have a similar thought today. Yeah, I think both of these players are going to win the MVP of the NFL at some point. In one game I could see that, how special it was. But I also I want to say sorry to the, the Dolphins organization. I apologize because when you guys made the move from Fitzy, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Tua should not be playing right now. He's not healthy enough. That offensive line's not playing well enough. Don't go ruin him. I was wrong. You guys knew exactly what you were doing. This kid is absolutely ready to go deal in the NFL because that's what it looked like yesterday, dealing. You talk about subtle pocket movement. You talk about the suddenness in where he needs to be, the ball placement, getting the ball out on time, distributing. In that, this, that, that's the row right there. That 39 throw right there to Devontae Parker, that ball's on that shoulder out on time. I was wrong, Dolphins. You knew exactly what you were doing. Tua is 100% ready to be your starting quarterback into the playoffs. What does that you look know, like? You know, Greeny, I might not be able to get this coat button, but, you know, <laughs> if it's a quarterback thing, you know who is right, Greeny? And, and, and Daniel, you know who's always right on quarterbacks? You're looking at him. I told you guys this was the right decision. Me and Coach Flory's got this right. Put two in. Why? He protects your football team also. Yes, he can make all the plays, but he's not going to make, even though he's a Harvard-educated guy, Fitzpatrick, blow games. This guy is a superstar right here. He's accurate as can be, and he, he protects your football team by not turning it over. So to me, all you got to do is please protect him. No, Tua, no, slide. Protect yourself. That's the only way this kid won't be successful. That was the only thing he didn't do right yesterday was, was slide man. when he could. RC, no one knows the great players better than the rivals, right? So my LSU friend, you got the Alabama quarterback out there yesterday. What did you see from Tua Tungavailoa and what really felt like his first real game? You know, we saw all the things we saw at Alabama. Obviously, you know, I was with Dan, and I wasn't with Dan on the fact that Tua might not play well. I was with, I was on the side of that Ryan Fitzpatrick was playing well, and if Tua Tungabaloa wasn't ready, they shouldn't force him in there. But I also said, I believe in Brian Flores. Respect that he has earned says he can make this decision. But my goodness, did we see the real Tua Tungabaloa yesterday. Mm. He looked healthy. He looked quick. And when I say quick, not just quick as far as physically. If you look at the way he was going 
through progressions, making sure he put the ball accurately in the right spot. And we talked about Baker Mayfield with some of that Drew Brees stuff, but many people said the same thing about Tua Tagovailoa, and we saw that with the skill to get out of the pocket. And the one thing I remember about Tua Tagovailoa more than anything is this: the first time we saw him, we were doing a mega cast. I was basically just eating pizza, cheese and dip, and all that <laughs> stuff on TV. And Ooh, Tua Tagovailoa throws in an interception against Georgia, and he walks over to Nick Saban, who was the scariest coach I ever played for, and put his arm around him, smiled, and said, hey, man, don't worry about this, coach. I got it. That dude's ready. I knew he would be mentally ready. I knew he would be emotionally ready. But yeah. to play this well physically this early, now this team is in a discussion that we didn't think they'd be in at the beginning of the season. Yes, I mean, the division ran away from New England yesterday. The Bills played a game that felt losable against Seattle. They won. The Dolphins played a game that felt losable yeah. against Arizona. They won. That could be an interesting battle the rest of the way in the AFC East. Okay, on the clock for some games that we didn't have a chance to get to. Rex, Justin Herbert, what did you see from the young Chargers star, and what have you seen from him all year long? 45 seconds, Rex, go. All right, if we are going to have the draft over again, look, Cincinnati made the right move by getting the local hero. But 31 other teams would it take Justin Herbert, I can promise you. Right now, this guy's got the, he, you talk about cool, a, a cool customer, yep. he's got it. He's, he's got the huge arm. He's so accurate with the football. And by the way, he can flat out run. This guy right here, it's a no-brainer. Look, we understand what the record is, but the Chargers, this guy's going to be in the MVP conversation sooner than later. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. They've only got two wins, but they're second in the league in offense. Right, yeah. It's going to be second a good job overall next year. In, in, in offense. There's no question about it right there. And, and when you look at it, guys, they're playing without three offensive linemen and your starting tailback. And, and he has really been spectacular. Think about the circumstances he came in under. Remarkable. All right, Dan, I know you want to talk about the quarterback of the Raiders. I think Derek Carr is the best player in football that we're not talking enough about right now. He, some good years, right? Some good years in the past. And all of a sudden this year, he has absolutely exploded onto the scene. They lead the number one efficient offense in the NFL, the Raiders. They've played the toughest schedule. The toughest schedule so far, so, so to date, and they're 5-3. and three. Right now he's over 2,000 yards, 16 touchdowns, 2 picks. And he's doing the one thing that every one of us said Derek Carr doesn't do enough. Throw it down Push the, the ball downfield. Mm -hmm. Derek Carr is now back yeah. to pushing the ball downfield. So you're talking yeah. about a guy who's super smart, efficient with the ball. He values it so he doesn't give it away. But now he's got people to throw the ball to downfield. Derek Carr is the best player in the NFL that we're not talking enough about, and the Raiders are a problem because of it. Yeah, here we all thought that maybe they would move on from him when they got to Vegas, and instead, you were right, he's playing great. All right, RC, for your 45 seconds, we talked a lot about the Seahawks and Russell Wilson and their offense. But when you watch their defense play, what goes through your mind? 45 seconds, go. That'd be good. Bro, I feel like I'm watching Freaky Friday and somebody switched the Legion of Boom with this defense because if you look at this defense, no defense in the history of football has given up more yards in the first eight games than this team besides the 2012 Seahawks. And when you watch this team, they're saying, let Russ cook, let's ru let, let Russ cook. He has to be able to cook because they can't stop anyone. Jamal Adams, who was so excited to be back, he's rushing, he's hustling, he's sideline to sideline, and it still doesn't matter. The Buffalo Bill still put up over 40 points. Russell Wilson's fighting for an MVP, but right now he's going to be fighting to win a playoff game because if this defense gets into the playoffs, if this defense gets an opportunity to face a top-notch offense, Russell Wilson's going to have to score 50 points. Yeah, that's a really good point.